pass. Fuel I burn. Fuel is pumping engines, burning hard, loose, and clean. Um, welcome to the full review of the Rose Technics RT5000. And I have two of them here because you see, Hi-Fi Go was like, hey, we're going to send you a thing. And if you like it, we'll sell the thing because they really wanted my opinion on that. And so they sent me this and I had some questions. <laughs> I was like, ha, 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 wait. First of all, I saw these and I'm like, what are those inputs? And they're like, those are outputs. And I'm like, no, that's not how outputs work. Outputs look like this. You see, there's a PP and a Vajuju. And the PP is where the signal comes from. And then it goes into the Vajuju. But apparently in other parts of the world, that isn't necessarily the case. See, when you look at the back of like a powered monitor, it's always the whole version of an XLR. And then you take it out of your source, which is the peg version, and you take the peg and you put it into the hole. So they were backwards on this, and I was like, can you make that not the thing? And they actually changed it for me. So this version here, which is the actual the version they're going to sell, look, it's got the PP version, so it can come out. Anyway, what are we looking at? Zeos, this is a, I think, $600. Because they told me the price like two months ago, and they haven't ver verified it, and it's still not on the website. But I believe it's a $600 DAC amp. So that's not cheap, right? You got to do some stuff. You got to do some stuff. Oh, you do stuff, don't you? Oh, oh, you do stuff. The, all right. The Rose Tech, I've never heard of Rose Technics. All right. I was sent their initial model, and I had such a fucking nightmarish time just getting it to turn on. Like, literally getting it to play music. Like, I was just hating it. And I was like, please do. And they fixed all of that. Thank God. Um, so, all right. We can look at the back of this. Besides these being reversed, we don't have to worry about it. They look exactly the same as a new one. You get your power, which is a 15-volt 3-amp, which is a transformer that's just down there. It's a regular old plug-in transformer. On-off switch in the back. So, you do have to give it the reach around if you want to turn it on and off. Um, you have your outputs. Ignore these. Uh, here, XLR. You have uh, RCA lineouts as well. This weird looking knob is actually the Bluetooth antenna. Instead of having one that goes up like a little thing, it's just a, well, it looks like a knob. Um, unfortunately, underneath that is a switch that's quite important. If you want to do USB, its switch goes up. If you want to do SPDIF or Bluetooth, switch go down. And once you've got a bunch of wires plugged in, it's basically protected from you getting to that switch. So hopefully you're either using Bluetooth and SPDIF or you're using USB. That said, it does have USB fiber coaxial and Bluetooth, and yet there's only a switch for two positions. So I have no idea how it uses the SPDIF. I think it just guesses. Like you plug in one and like go, and it's like, all right. And you plug in the other one, it's like go, and it's like, all right. So if you want to have a uh, fine control over which one of these SPDIF it uses, too bad. I think it's too bad. The, ma the manual, um, I would love to rewrite the manual because it's also terrible. Um, that said, you got gold screws in here for some reason. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, oh, I should probably point out that the top of this is real leather. And the bottom, because the bottom matters, is real leather. And the front is wood, real wood. And unfortunately, this is not real gold. If it was, I would just yank the knobs off, melt it down, sell them, and put a plastic knob on. Um, it has the same issues from the start where you get three gold buttons. And then, and you could actually tell, because we're using the pocket too, there are words on this that says gain in hollow gold lettering on gold. In a, on a gold plate. So that's gain. And there's four gain levels. Low, medium, high, and super. And I find with uh, most headphones, even the JT1s, which yes, this is the cable from the Tungstens. Go to hell, I'll do what I feel like. You deserve it, baby. Um, I find the third gain setting is usually where you're at. Low is super low. I'm going to, during this video, put in the Dunu Zen Pros on it, which are the most sensitive IMs I have. And I'll put it to low, and I'm going to see if I even get it to play at a norm normal volume at full. So you get a gain switch that goes through four gains. The other issue I have is here. Ready? 
That's ex that's super. That got real loud. And that's low, and that's normal, and that's high, and that's super. Did you notice the thing where nothing happens? If there's not a blink or it blinks twice to say it's on low, you have no idea what gain you're on, ever. So prayer is an important option. I'm going to give this a a full fucking recommendation for sound. I mean, Before we go any further into it, and I keep making fun of it for how it looks and touches and then the knobs on the wrong side. This has 10 op amps in it. 10. That's that many op amps. And then an additional two op amps that are specifically Muse op amps, which if it's the Muse I'm thinking of, because here, this is, hold on. According to the spec sheet, which again, I never heard of Rose Technics and they probably need to work on their English translation stuff. But according to this, it has headphone amplifier is Muse's 01 times two and eight power tubes. There are not tubes in this, but it says it has eight power tubes. And apparently, and I don't know why it's a supported file formats or MP3, FLAC, Wave, DSD, Apple losses, because it's it doesn't have a way to read files. So we're going to take this with a grain of salt. A big old grain of salt. All right. At least it has a signal to noise ratio, 125. Channel separation, 115 dB. It's got the nicest, newest Bluetooth 5.1. THD plus noise is three zeros and then a five. And then you have the single-ended output, which is the front. I probably should point out it has a quarter inch, 3.5, and 4.4. So the 3.5 and quarter inch have a maximum of 800 milliwatts at 32 ohm. And the balanced claims 1.6 watts at 32 ohm. I think that's a fucking lie. This thing sounds way more powerful than 1.6 watts at 32 ohms. All right? Despite, you know, not this. I'm talking about, like, I did the review just now, in case you want to know how these reviews work. I did the review just now of the goddamn SJY Horizon, which is a very hard-to-drive headphone. And I was like, yeah, whatever. You know what? We could plug tungsten into it. I don't know if it'll run tungsten, but we'll give it a shot. And then you get your headphone connectors, and it weighs 822.5 grams, approximately. If you're going to use the term approximately, take the half gram away. Why? Uh, and there's the approximate size, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I love this. It shows a green one with a green leather. Yet it, down here it says, pictures are for display only. The specific product shall prevail in kind. That is the nicest thing that's ever been written on a thing. Uh, I do have the case for it here, the box. This should be the retail packaging. It's got, like, wood. It also has a dual Sabre 9038 Pros, by the way. So it's got two of the flagship Sabre DAX. Which I'm a pretty big Sabre DAC fan until you get into, like, the ROM stuff. But yes, okay, good for that. This is the weirdest, like, DAC amp combo I could think of. As far as quirks. As far as having, like, the gain button that doesn't tell you what's going on. And then a dedicated mute button. To mute. So if we're... Get to a song that's actually playing. My playlist is the worst for this sometimes. Mute. Again, no indication it's muting. You know how long it took me to figure out that I had accidentally muted it when I was testing this thing? A lot. A lot of time. More time than a little. Like, why? Who? Honest to God, if you have a knob and you can turn it down... Will you ever hit a mute button? So that's a wasted button right there. And um, then you have your Bluetooth button, which you hold for pairing and everything. Then here is a four LED display. And the far right is power, which we could see is lit up in red. Thank you for not being blue. 10 out of 10, full recommend. Um, followed by a DSD light, followed by a Bluetooth light, followed by an EQ light. Now, if we're gonna start playing with this thing, we're going to have to bust out the manual and read about the EQ light. All right? So give me a second. Welcome to the manual I wish I could rewrite. Um, so EQ doesn't mean EQ before you get freaked out. EQ is just the filters, just the DAC filters. Like, we, like I can't hear the difference between filter DACs, like brick wall and fast, slow roll off and roll off and maximum roll off and brick. I, I can't tell. 
and you hold down the gain, and look what happens. It blinks. One, two, three, four out of seven. So it could do that seven times. Yet, it specifically says in this manual, if you could even call this that, that there is no function to show you that the gain is changing. It's also no function to tell you if you're muted. So it literally, so don't worry about it. Um, back to things and stuff. So let's plug in something else besides the wood matching balanced connectored cost kph 40s let's go with the 808s which are also wood and matching but have a quarter inch forcefully it also says in the manual to turn the knob to the left the maximum left so i will do that so if there's a reason i picked this wallpaper like i i try to make every wallpaper sort of relate if something is like extravagant i try to find a rich anime girl if something is very 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 harsh and shrill. I try to find an anime girl with knives. This motherfucker is soft. You so soft? Like, we're talking class A sort of soft without class A sort of hardware. Like, everything is smooth. Like, I knew once I plugged the KPH 40s in today, right now, sitting down to do the review. By the way, these are the uh, really nice USB cables it comes with. Um, one to go into your phone with a USB-C, and then one to go into your computer. I don't know why they gave you two. They could have just given you an adapter, but whatever. Anyway, the sound signature of this DAC amp combo is we're going to filter this motherfucker through 10 goddamn op amps, and you're going to like it. And you know what? I do. Like, I do. I, I could legitimately just give this like, oh, yeah, it's made of leather and wood, and who doesn't want that for $600? But that doesn't sell me on it. It has to sell me when I play the music and the music comes through my headphones and I go, ooh. I'll sit back. Remember to sit back, Zeos. That's the only way we're going to get over this new transition. Ooh. I'm just letting like music roll over my brain right now. Hold on. I got to give these 808s a review, and I'm not 100% sure, because they're fucking expensive. They're like $1,300. And for a little bit more, you can get 909s. And why would you get 808s and not 909s when they're not even painted? And it's just like... But on the Rose Technics, it's sort of like, oh, there it is. Infirmary. Okay, well, we got to just keep swapping. Because the joy of getting to review the Rose Technics today, which, by the way, that was still on third gain setting with less power because unbalanced and plenty loud at noon. Uh, I want to save you for last because I only gave you a quick test and I almost coomed. So let's plug you in. These, by the way, haven't seen these in a while. These are the Solo Audio Balance. I never sold them. I never got rid of them. I swapped pads of them with the Kony SS uh, pads. And then I sat them on the thing behind me because fuck you. I like these Sella Audio, Zios, Sella, Sella Audio Balance. Put these sons of bitches on and hit play. These may not need high gain. Hold on, let's cycle through. Is that low? You see, I'm too close to the top on two, so I got to go to three. And then keep it like there. Every headphone I plug into this sounds like I've applied some sort of DSP filter here. Something here in this in the song side of it. Because everything's coming through. And it's like, God damn, are we tube preying this? Maybe when it said eight tubes in the thing, it was it meant it. They're just like micro tubes that are on a fucking other planet and it's using stellar technologies as sort of stellar technologies. It has to be a brand name already. Yeah, now this is one of the finest examples of the sound hardware can make. Ugh. Just, have we gone over the functionality, right? It's very simple. You don't have any controls to turn on and off the rears. That would have been great instead of a mute button to have it be like headphone, rear, both headphone that would have been nice but no we have mute instead so it's just gonna output all the time all the time i have to use this as a preamp actually no 
I don't think it is a preamp. I think it is a full line out. Oh, shit, do I have to test this? I got to test this right now because I forgot. All right, give me a second. Give me a second. All right, sorted. This volume knob does nothing for the back outputs. We've got full RCA outputs, and this is currently coming off of the amp back there, which is now coming off of this, and we have it not affecting that at all. I'm just doing that. So there you go. Sorted. All that took was a couple of wires and jumping around the back of it, and it's, it's fine. It's fine. Let's unplug this now. I will say that the uh, like the wood doesn't actually affect where the knob like they're not like into the wood, but it's a very very stiff connection. I'm sure if you used it for a couple weeks, it would probably loosen up. But that's like get it in there. That is some get it in there fucking a force that you have to apply. I'm sure this video has come out. I'm just trying to get the JT1 video out, and then I think they went off sale because I think I sold them all. So, haha. -ha. Um. Yeah, there's no. There's no reason for this box to sound this good, and I I'm putting softness and like smoothness and like feeling like everything's being pumped through an oboe, as a good thing. It, they are absolutely. Just. They're tweaking the sound in a way that you usually can't get without real nasty fuckery or real expensive fuckery. Like the two pre's on everything. You got to get a black ice audio and you're over here and you got to run a class A amplifier and do this. And then you need a solid DAC. The fact that this has a pair of the Sabre DACs in it running balanced and then an amplifier that can push to... I promised you I would text the tungsten, so I guess this should be the time I do that. I don't have high ho I mean, hold on, let's on. Low? Yeah, on on low, I could max this out, and I'm at like 70% of the volume I'd want on these headphones. All right, we'll swap to tungsten, but first, let's unplug this. First, I want to know what kind of noise floor we're looking at because it should be dead ass silent. And the only way to test that is with the stethoscopes to the audio world. For those of you who do not own a set already, I weep for you. Go get the Dunu Zen pros. Let them sing to you. Sing, sing, sing. Like the prison. Sing, sing. Um, hold on. Real quick, real quick. This is just a test. This is like your doctor. Look to the left and cough. All right, we're on the lowest gain, and I can max this out. 92% of how loud I'd like this to be. So low gain on this is absolutely useless. These are the easiest to drive IEMs I have, and low gain is not doing anything. All right, there we go. Now we're on medium gain, and for IEMs, about 2 o'clock. Let's go down. High gain. Ooh, we're blisteringly loud at like 10, 10, 10, 30. And then super. Oh, the gain affects it. Look at that. Low. So the knob doesn't affect it, but the gain affects it. Did it end? hate when it happens yeah look at that we're actually smashing the top that's stupid i mean you got some quirks going on here rose technics so let's go back yeah that's too loud there okay obviously the the easiest to drive iems so i gotta turn that down now because i'm about to test tungsten so the line outs, and I'm assuming that is for both the balanced and the headphone out. Let's, let's double ch doubly check this shit. Uh, so that won't do anything. Just one, two, three, four. Yeah. So your gain output for your headphone and for your line outs. That's weird. It actually kind of reminds me of the... Um, 
the Gishelli Lab stuff where you have three different output levels. Only here you have four different output levels. I'm just concerned. Actually, I am kind of concerned. I do not want to push more than a recommended amount of voltage into an amplifier. So I'm going to disconnect the one that I've got down there, the LA90D. Um, so we're not pushing to that. And I'll just turn this down all the way. Um, I don't want. I do not want to blow. You do not want to blow anything up because I have no idea if that XLR is getting fed. There should be like a maximum of like 4.5 volts at most, five volts. But I've had some amplifiers that are just like I don't know how seven taste, and it's like ah oh, bad. So put that in there. One, two. Okay, maximum gain. If it's gonna catch fire, now is the time. Yeah, that a 1.6 volt, 1.6 watts, my dick hole. It's playing tungstens. I'm a maxed out, highest gain, super gain. And I'd say I'm at like, I'd say that's 93% tungsten, which is, and it's still smooth though. Like I'm still tasting the DAC amp. I don't know if it's the DAC side or the amp side that's doing more good for it, but I can still just taste it. Just, hmm. Actually, you know what I could do? I could plug this back in. Hold on. We're going to do one more thing. Gib, gib sec. Um... That should be medium. Again, there's no indicator, so we're just guessing here. We like guessing here on Z-Reviews. Guessing is our favorite game. So now I'm going to plug that back in. I'm going to unplug this from here. And now I'm going to get that adapter from there. Plug it into here. Then I'm going to reach, give this old reach under and pull this out. So now this is coming off of that LA90D through the LC30 feeding from this so turn that down all the way that volume is going to be fixed unpause this i got to switch the output to there we go oh god one two three i'm gonna go to the third highest i'm gonna make this High gain, which is what down here? Oh, Jesus. Okay. So now I could turn that knob. Wow. That sounds. Ooh, that sounds like what I want. So now I'm dacking with this. Oh shit, I may have to redo it. See, here's the thing, I ripped apart my DAC arena where I was testing DACs with those near-field speakers and then maybe the amplifier had an issue, so I can't test it right now. But this, maybe this is more of a DAC than an amp. Because, I mean, I know the LA90D and I know how it sounds on tungsten. It isn't my preferred choice. But right this second, feeding this three out of four gain through that on high gain. I'm I'm kind of smitten a little bit. I mean, I've listened to like two songs. But there's a there's still that warmth to it. Whatever is happening in this fucking leather and wooden box feels it. It feels gold and leather and wood. It, it's got that like it literally perfectly fucking matches the Meze 109s. I should have taken the Meze 109s out. Because that's that sort of like, if Meze 109s could be every headphone, boom. That sounds like it's overgained a little bit. Hold on. Actually, I should go one, two, three. And then we should be back around to the medium gain. Maybe. This is wild. All right, so 
basically, the long and short of it is, this is worth $600. It's fucking quirky. Again, I'll t I didn't talk about this, how the knob, there's a notch in the bottom for the knob. But I feel like that's where it should be on top. Like, why are you pushing the knob as close to the surface as possible? Wouldn't you want the knob to be like, I don't know, up and maybe expose more of it through this notch? Not that it ma Honestly, though, here's the thing. Just turn the fucking thing upside down. You can't, other than having, I don't even like, you know what? I don't like the lettering on top. I don't like the gold lettering on top ruining my leather. Sorted. You know those letters we couldn't read before? You can't read them anyway. So just. There we go. Run your rose Technics upside down. And it shouldn't matter with the heat dissipation because it's all coming out of the sides anyway. It just makes your knob go from here to, to there. But at least you could see it and you could grab it a little better. So this does it have no issues? Obviously, it's got issues. But fuck me, man, the sound. Like, we're talking about EF600 level cleanliness in the DAC. And that's an R2R. And that's like an exceptional fucking unit. And then it has a headphone amp that apparently can run tungsten, but it's only 1.6 watts. So I have no idea what's going on in this box. It's a magical mystery box of awesome. It's like a, it's like a, a what the hell is, does fucking Freeman call them? What are the books? Gr Gremel, Gremel, Grem, Grem, Grimace, Grundle. There's a valuable Grundle in here. I'm pretty sure that's what she calls them. Do not correct me in the comments. Grimoire, Grimoire? Grim, I don't know why they made up a weird word. Almost had words from fantasy and I've never heard it. So I do recommend this kind of highly. Like as far as sound goes, it's spectacular. It's all the shit around the sound that you're going to have to figure out if you can deal with. Like you're going to set your gain and pretty much be done. And you just have to learn to turn that shit way down before you, you switch and then like barely turn it up. Am I on high? I don't know where I am. Where am I? Okay. You might have issue maybe if you have a large enough connector here because these are all sunken into the wood. I really didn't have any issues with it. The buttons are... Mute button is useless. Bluetooth, if you're going to spend $600 on a Bluetooth thing, well, by all means, it's got really highly rated Bluetooth, you know, 5.1. But I feel like that's just like an extra bit. So that's two useless buttons. The gain doesn't tell you what the gain is. It has these LEDs that could blink. It obviously can. It does it for the filter settings. It just so many little things I'd want to change that wouldn't be like the end of days. But I'm still recommending it. I'm still fucking recommending it. Run it upside down. Be the boss that runs it upside down. I'm going to run it upside down. Because it literally now is a beautiful blank piece of leather. And everything else looks exactly same there isn't even words in the front there's not even words in the front this says Rhodes Technics RT5000 on the on the knob in a circle so when you turn upside down it still does and it puts this ugly little little midget thing on the bottom so there you go so yeah I absolutely fucking recommend this just understand the quirks and you'll be fine if this is your only DAC amp it may actually be almost too soft Almost too, because I think I couldn't review. It's one of those products that I know I couldn't review things with. Like you don't see the EF600 here all the time. Like I try to take it off my desk because I think that makes things sound better than they are. It's the same reason when I had that $17,000 amplifier, which if you haven't seen that review, go check out the review of the uh, Mass Cobo 465. I could never have one. If, you, if I owned one and it was sitting there instead of that Solaris, I could never plug a headphone into it because it would always make the headphone sound different and better than it is. And this has got kind of that going on. That little bit of flavor. I ain't saying it's a mass fucking Kobo 465, but it's got something going on that's got more to the sound than just like, oh, it's good. It's It's got a flavor. It's, it's your cappuccino mocha fucking ice cream and not just chocolate. Anyway, wallpaper, very soft in the wallpaper hoard with every wallpaper I've ever used. Cats. 
um, in the house and not in the description. Links to everything here. Links to the quintuplets, quintessential quintuplets wallpaper uh, desk mat, if it exists. A lot of these uh, desk mats have disappeared off Amazon, and I'm just SOL, and so are you. But I'm going to keep cycling through them so you can check and see if they're there. And maybe if you find any mouse pads you like and you think I should buy, as long as they're under like $35, just link them in the comments or send them to me on Telegram. Um, yeah, I'm done. Wallpaper links. Links to this has been out for a little bit. I just couldn't get this review done fast enough for the launch. Again, Quirks. Worth it. That's it. That's all you can know is Quirks and worth it. $5 a month to see reviews early. Participate in yard sales. Uh, get to sound demos, lossless, and all the old sound demos. Get to ask me uh, questions in a private released Patreon video, which I'm trying to set up for this month or the next month, where I'll gather your questions and just do a quick, you know, Q&A that's a private video. $10 gets you in the behind-the-scenes private Telegram chat where you don't have to wait for a video to come out for you to have those questions answered because I'll answer them for you directly. But also, once you're in that $10 chat, you get to ask other people questions, and you get into the Lifetime Swap Me channel to buy, sell, and trade gear, which is great if you want to just buy, sell, or trade gear privately. Um, check out the Hi-Fi Guides form. I don't know how long this video is. Probably way too long. Jesus Christ. Gold and wood and leather and just... Mm. Ride him about what was the, the cowboy? What was the cowboy one? Bear broke back, broke back, not quite broke back, but it's it's very soft. It's very soft. One other note about the Rose Technics I just remembered it. Um, in order to swap between like coaxial digital and fiber optic, you need to unplug the one you don't want, leave the one you want plugged in, power the unit off, power the unit back on, and then flip the switch from USB off and on, and then it'll switch inputs. Just in case you're losing your goddamn mind, that's how you do it. It involves unplugging the one you don't want and then switching the switch and power swapping and then you're good. So yeah, no, it's again, quirks like a motherfucker.